In a scene strongly reminiscent of a Rambo film, an American held hostage faces a demanding torturer. Sign the document. Welcome to the wacky world of Hot Shots Part Deux. To complete the comic torture sequence, a team of physical effects specialists prepares actor Richard Crenna for a highly charged climax. Now I know what the turkey feels like on Thanksgiving. <laughs> for these comedy filmmakers, torture by electrocution brings unlikely results. Ready? All right, guys, here we go. Ready? And roll, please. I think we're back to uh, we need popcorn. That was some really good toast, folks. Creating these sight gags are the sleight of hand magicians known as the physical effects crew. Today, we'll follow the painstaking work involved in crafting big screen belly laughs. Swim for sure! Next on Movie Magic. Director-writer Jim Abrams made his reputation lampooning Hollywood movies and such off-the-wall classics as Airplane, The Naked Gun, and Hot Shots. Hurry! Films that demonstrate Abrams' deep appreciation of the sight gag. Hold on! Don't bring this baby down! Stop squirming! When we originally write ideas, we tried not to have any sort of restraints, and we think that most anything can happen. And in fact, what, what you find out in this business is that it, it, most anything can happen. Making this kind of comedy happen is the work of the physical effects team. Kenny, are you feeding more on, on the right arm than on the, Indian, on the other one? Physical effects are defined as illusions created live on the set during filming. This is the realm of breakaways, special props, and other weird and original mechanical devices. Try to clog it if you can. Huh? Try to clog it. Physical effects craftsmen are truly jacks of all trades utilizing their hands-on skills in carpentry, plumbing, metalwork, plastics, and electrical engineering to invent new methods to create outlandish sight gags. And John Frazier knows his sight gags, having overseen the physical effects for Ruthless People, The War of the Roses, and Airplane. Everything's all in timing, no matter whether it's comedy or drama. You have a script and you have dialogue that you have to go by. You have to set up the joke, deliver the joke, and then do the sight gag. In Hot Shots Part Dieu, the script calls for an outrageous gunfight. A fishing boat, helmed by Charlie Sheen, is destroyed by an Iraqi gunship. To shoot this scene, John has built a 50-foot breakaway boat out of balsa wood. As we'll see, it is the nature of physical effects that many elaborate creations are built to be destroyed. The whole boat is sitting on 55-gallon drums for flotation. And this is all they'll see from the, from the water line up. Since this boat is going to be shot up, we use the balsa wood because it doesn't splinter. An actor can be right next to it and he won't get hurt. To simulate a hailstorm of bullets, the breakaway boat is rigged with explosive devices called squibs. There will literally be about 2,000 of these on this boat when we're done. After every squib is in place, the result is a perfectly synchronized shootout. As the firefight continues, actor Charlie Sheen finds himself surrounded by John Frazier's set pieces. He's firing this M60 machine gun at the enemy. And uh, the gag is that they'll pan down and they'll see all these bullets or spent shells stacked up against Charlie. So what we do to achieve that is, is we make a mold so that we don't have to sit here and glue each little shell onto this armature. A silicone rubber mold is made of the empty shells. Then a quick drying plastic is poured in to make a casting. This is what it looks like when it comes out of there. Now while it's still warm, 
we can take that and we can mold it around anything. And then when it's painted, it'll look just like those shelves. Elsewhere in John's shop, another sight gag is being prepared. Somebody fires at the rock, hits the rock with a bullet, and it just deflates. It's a weather balloon inside, covered with foam and this latex skin. Sound effects will put the down in it, and then uh, and it will get you back. A vacuum pump draws the air out of the balloon and into four cylinders, which are safely hidden off screen. Another moment of laughter, courtesy of the physical effects wizards. Guys! Comedy films have always incorporated special effects to enliven the jokes. In 1924, Harold Lloyd rose to new heights in this classic sequence in Safety Last. The legendary comedian relied on his physical effects team to build props that would break apart right on cue. Films like these so associated physical effects with comedy that today any sequence involving a special effect, comedy or not, is called a gag. Scenes were often improvised on the spot, forcing the effects men to continually invent their craft. It would just be a matter of uh, grab a, a wire, a cable, a, a pry, a, a bar or something and uh, make something work. Academy Award winning effects man Danny Lee learned his craft from his father Carl, who rigged gags for one of Hollywood's funniest comedy teams. They did everything kind of off the cuff with Abbott and Costello because they were kind of innovative themselves. They wanted things uh, that weren't necessarily written in a script. Roll them. Frisco ain't big enough for the both of us. On your feet, you double crosser. One result of this improvisational process was an amazing array of methods to break things apart. Danny's own designs of destruction appeared in the 1963 super comedy, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. This is the garage in the Mad, Mad World, and it's in its stages of falling down, collapsing. There's individuals on every one of these trips, and they all have to go by my count. With Danny Lee carefully timing the action, 25 effects men manually pulled hidden trip cables to create the collapsing deck of cards illusion. Today, on stage 14 at 20th Century Fox Studios, these filmmakers are continuing this madcap tradition of physical effects with the comedic satire, Hot Shots Part Dieu. You know, and he, he comes alive then just for a second, and I, I do that, and then tickle him here. The actors are rehearsing a climactic scene between the film's two protagonists. United States President Tug Benson, played by Lloyd Bridges, challenges Jerry Haliva as Saddam Hussein to a duel. To ensure his parody hits the mark, director Abrams leaves nothing to chance. Overseeing much of the effects work for this sequence is Eric Henry. You know, then he can be off to this side. We figured that there was more arm off here if he's swinging with this arm than this arm. So if we lose the carpet, we're okay on this side with the job. Yeah, In this crucial scene, the Hot Shots team is attempting to parody one of the most talked about effects in modern cinema. Hasta la vista, baby. In Terminator 2, Director James Cameron set audiences and effects specialists buzzing when the T-1000 character was frozen and blasted into pieces, only to melt and reform. The Hot Shots parody of this scene will substitute the two Terminators with the President and Saddam Hussein. One, two, three, no. What we're trying to do, of course, is uh, attempt to pay homage to uh, Cameron's T-2. And what we've got, basically, is uh, there's a sword fight that's taking place in, uh, in Saddam's villa. Just before Lloyd Bridge is, uh, is about to get hit by Saddam, he's sprayed with CO2. As with the villainous T-1000, the frozen Saddam character will break into a million metal pieces, melt into liquid, and then reform. The big difference here is that Saddam's dog is also frozen, then smashed by the falling dictator. To create this illusion, 
The effects team will require lifelike breakable replicas, liquid metals, high-speed cameras, and one small Yorkshire Terrier. While the first unit film crew works on the main stage with the actors, the smaller second unit sets up crucial effects shots. And I just think that he needs to start a little bit farther back. To ensure that their footage fits seamlessly with the actor's shots, Eric works closely with second unit director of photography, Michael Seibel. Okay, Saddam only? Saddam only. Okay, Saddam only, let, it, let us do put on the uh, N6 and, uh, yeah, and we'll shoot at 24 frames. Their first challenge is to create the illusion of Saddam and his dog being frozen. Good, stay, stay. Good. Roll when you're ready, Michael. For this shot in the freezing sequence, the terrier runs up to the legs of Saddam's stand-in. Okay, action. When the second unit shot is completed, it is incorporated into the live-action footage. Aluminum siding. Ten-year guarantee. I'll never have to be painted. To continue the scene, the effects team will need frozen images of Saddam Hussein and his dog. To create these breakaway forms, hot shots turn to some hot shot model makers. Eric hired uh, Optic Nerve based on our effects that we had done for a Batman Returns, which are these mechanical bats here. Eric worked on that and liked the work, and so he hired us to do the breakaway Saddam Hussein effects. And also because we do a, some pretty realistic uh, fake heads and, and human parts, and we have a really good team, these guys back here, to help us out. To make the dog replica, a figure is first fashioned in clay by sculptor Mike Arbius. It's hard to get that fluffy look, you know? Once the form is sculpted, it's coated with a layer of silicone. The silicone has a plaster mother mold on the outside of it since the silicone is flexible and needs to hold its shape. The silicone and plaster molds are reassembled to cast the breakaway forms. To produce a test casting, Mike uses a quick drying plastic. I'm just kind of slushing this around so I can get a thin coat in there. Within seconds, Mike knows he's captured that elusive, fluffy look. Something like this. A little dog. Paper-thin forms are then cast of the entire dog using an easily broken fiberglass resin. It will break very easily, hopefully. A coat of paint adds the final touch. A slightly different process is employed to create the breakaway Saddams. This is the first generation mold pulled off the actor, Jerry, who's playing Saddam Hussein. And we put him in a uh, dancer's unitard, cover him with Vaseline, and we do this here, which is using plaster bandages and uh, reinforced wood. We cast uh, a rigid urethane form from the mold that we just looked at, and then we dressed it. We put the actual wardrobe on it, and we starched it with hairspray the starched clothing is saturated with a polyester resin to create a solid-looking form. This sculpture is used to make a mold of silicone rubber with a fiberglass shell for support. Breakable fiberglass resin is again used to create the final Saddam bodies. Once the forms are assembled, Everett Burrell steps in to give Saddam a paint job. We're using a military model paints. So we can get the colors matched up to his wardrobe. The last step is to make sure the figures will be a smash. Okay, here we go. Oh, excellent. That was great. Really good. Really good. With the test a success, the effects team is ready to give Saddam Hussein his big break in the movies. <laughs> When the stars of Hot Shots Part Dieu had completed their work in the scene, Saddam Hussein had been frozen by a blast of carbon dioxide. To match that shot, the breakaway form is given identical icicles as the effects team prepares to shoot. And then this yeah, right one, there. Michael, yeah. is going to go snap, okay. and you're going to move with it to yeah. here. Let's you start, just kind of move it to there. Let's start off with the dolly uh, down a little bit, Jack. Gary? As in Terminator 2, the film being parodied, 
The illusion of Saddam shattering into pieces starts with a breakaway leg. That looked pretty good. Yeah. Think we got it? Yeah. For the big smash, the full-size breakaway Saddam is positioned on pegs that, when released, will swing the figure backwards. To ensure that Saddam appears to shatter into hundreds of pieces, the figure is filled with bits of metallic painted styrofoam. Saddam's military uniform is also prepped for the fall. So these holes are drilled in strategic areas to make sure that it does break in those areas. This is what we call pre-scoring. With only three Saddam statues to work with, the crew carefully prepares to make the most of each take. It's got to be tack sharp when it explodes. Exactly. We have two cameras, and we're going to have the one master where he falls away. Then we have the side camera, for the, the one that's down on the ground, for the dog. This is the point that we have to sell here, and the most important point for the, for the director is that this is Saddam crushing the dog. Give me another... Finally, smoke, everything's smoke. ready for an actual take. Okay, roll cameras. Both cameras rolling? In. Action! <laughs> Cut! Some piece of work there. <laughs> A roll right. on Saddam. But the smash effect happens too quickly for the camera to see. Oh, wow. He gets wiped out. Gonna go to In order to ensure that the audience will actually see Saddam crushing the dog, a third camera, capable of delivering extremely slow motion footage, is brought in to accomplish the shot. We realized they're just, it's not happening slow enough. We just won't even realize what's going on. But this thing will do it. This camera is used to shoot nuclear tests and explosions and stuff like that. And then we've got another camera that is Lloyd Bridges' point of view. He pushed Saddam down. And so with this camera, we'll see what he sees, basically. And then the very top camera is to get a real close-up of his face just breaking apart. After hours of preparation, everyone's ready for a final take. Roll camera, all cameras. Action! Cut! Oh, much better. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. In the finished scene, the hard work of Eric and his effects team provides a seamless comedy vignette. The dictator and his dog appear to freeze. The live figures are replaced by the fiberglass sculptures, and the big fall is a smashing success. Now to bring the broken shards of Saddam Hussein to life. Much like the Terminator's T-1000, the Saddam pieces will melt, pool, and then reform. Ooh, we need that. That's the table shot. It took effects technician Carl Roth two months of research, building, and testing to determine the best way to simulate the melting metal sequence. This is a three-inch thick aluminum plate, conducts heat well. For the first yeah, shot, Carl constructed a table with a built-in burner plate to melt a lead-based metal alloy. This alloy begins to liquefy at a temperature of only 158 degrees. Carl also built special tables for the pooling sequence. And there's a lever here on this side. Using levers and gravity, this table tilts to help force beads of mercury to pool together. Though a highly toxic metal, mercury is relatively safe in a liquid state. Still, the crew is quite content to let Carl wrangle the shiny beads. It looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. We have about six shots of uh, the mercury pooling that we're trying to duplicate. And in this first one, we have a, a, a small puddle of mercury. Action. We see this happen several times, and you end up with one big mother pool, if you want to call it that, of mercury. In the trickiest shot, the beads must roll together from several directions. To do this, Carl has built a circular table. There's a bolt on the bottom that you can adjust which this is a couple of layers of wood with a space in between and the bolt can pull down on this top layer of wood to make this a saucer shape. 
Carl. Action. Yeah. That's what I'm Hero. Good. Yep, definitely. That's it. Finally, after two days of shooting, the effects crew gets their pooling shots. But the joke is not over yet. The payoff comes a few scenes later when Saddam makes a fur-raising return. Just a second! This is personal! The dead-on parody of T2 is finished with a Wicked Witch ending for good measure. No one appreciates its effects more than writer-director Jim Abrams. The fact is, it's easy to write this stuff. You know, we just go into a room and sit down at a, at a typewriter and start writing stuff. It's one thing to write it. It's something else entirely to, to make it happen. And these are the magicians of Hollywood that make those things happen. Whether the script calls for smashing boats, shattering villains, or steaming victims, the physical effects team always finds a way to create the gag. It's a grand movie land tradition. In Hollywood, every comedian looks to the effects wizards for their big break.